We have major, major things happening today here at Aqualand inside the warehouse, inside the Artist of the Year studio sandbox area. All right, so now that we got the hard part out of the way, putting the street trunk off. Now we're putting these metal straps in, nailing them so that we get these straps out of the way so that it looks as natural as possible. Right, Amanda's? Kind of a surprise, but pizza is the way to my heart. An Italian beef Gardner pizza, for those of you who've never had it, is the best pizza in the world. Oh my God. Oh. Look at like that. it literally makes me smile. Hey, it's Brian with Team Aquascape, and yes, the smile is still on my face because I'm still genuinely excited about our sandbox over here. And you guys want to know what's going on with our sandbox? Well, let me show you. Come on. It's really cool because every day people are still working on this thing and getting it all ready for the artist of the year. And every single time I come back here, it looks that much better. Look at our planter box along the side of the house. It's totally finished. I actually love that this deck didn't go all the way to here because it adds a whole nother element to it. If we look back that way, you can see the pergola is finished. My favorite part of that thing is still how it's etched into that boulder. You got the guys working on the interior. They got the bar done, that concrete countertop went on there. They got the plants put in behind. Look, at, there's even a patio in front of it. It's so awesome. There's a couple little tweaks here and there, but it's so close to being finished. Literally, I think if we just kind of moved all of this stuff out of here, I think we'd be ready for the artist of the year. We need a couple chairs out here, some patio furniture, maybe a throw rug or two, and then we'll be done. You guys want to see how we got to this point? Check this out. So now that we got the hard part out of the way, putting the street trunk off. Now we're putting these metal straps in, nailing them so that we get these straps out of the way so that it looks as natural as possible. Right, Amanda? everybody so we've got a small little project that we are going to squeeze into the enormous amount of work that the team the gang has been working on in here when we were designing this space we we're kind of thinking about this area right behind me and how it is going to be viewable only from the shedster where Micho is at and we thought why not put a little secret waterfalls right over in this location and through here so what we're gonna do right now is kind of push pause on everything else back here mainly because Brian asked us to and he needs content for his Sunday video. We're gonna put our lives on hold to bow down to the master Brian and put a little reservoir in so he can putz around with a little waterfall back here. But it should be really, really cool. The thing about secret waterfalls is, yes, we talk a lot in our videos about capitalizing on all uh, on a lot of different viewing angles for our water features. However, there's something to be said about creating mystery and that kind of stuff in the garden. So that's exactly what this feature is going to do. I'm gonna go ahead and stop talking right there and let you guys, and your imagination run wild while we work on getting this little four block reservoir put in right here and then I can't wait to snap our fingers and this thing be done and you see what it looks like and what Brian comes up with. I think we have enough shovels to get this little reservoir in. What do you guys think? It's gonna be ass to elbow for about six and a half minutes for these guys to get this reservoir in. How much? How long? Seven and a half. You know, listen to this guy. Five and a half. Oh, okay. I thought you said seven and a half. Okay. All right. Maybe seven and a half shovels worth of sand will come out and we'll get this reservoir in. Oh, you want to use that guy? That would be hilarious. <laughs> you come over like, Arr! Anywho, we're going to get this reservoir in. We're going to use probably a 10 by 12 piece of liner. We're going to put fabric underneath and inside the liner. The way we normally would, we're going to use four small aqua blocks and a pump vault. It'll sit in the configuration, the exact configuration you see right here. The one challenge that we're going to face when digging down in this sand is that we will get the edges caving in on us so we might have to overdig this a little bit but I know these guys have been playing a lot in the sandbox so they're ready for it correcto yeah. let's get going We 
We modified the footprints of the reservoir a little bit because of the concrete floor underneath all this sand. Looks like we had to kind of reposition the pump vault to get it to where it'll sit down low enough that it's below the top of that concrete, which is fine. So we'll just have to kind of fill this in, I think with some cobbles right through there, just to keep that liner coming back like this so that we can build our little waterfalls off of that. And then some of our wing wall stones are gonna go between the pump vault and the concrete column that's sitting right there. We should be okay. We should be fine, right? We got this. So that's why it looks like this. What's up guys? Matt with the Aquascape. It's a, it's a sad and joyous day here at Aquascape. The old sandbox house is coming out. Yeah, you heard right. So while we're working on the new sandbox in the back and building the new shed, we gotta say goodbye to the old sandbox house facade. It's a sad day here at Aquascape. If you look at the bright side, we had to tear some stuff up. There you go. So we got all the old remnants from the old house facade out. And Danny's just working on getting all these screws out. This facade was built into three separate pieces. So Danny's just working on getting these screws out so we can take it apart a little easier. So we're sitting here outside our pergola space, right next to the shed that the guys from the Shedsters built. Awesome, awesome company, check them out. But look at this custom bar top right here. This is actually reclaimed wood from the city. In fact, if you look at it really close, and you can't see right now because there's varnish all over the top, but it says West North Avenue, right from the city. Such a cool additional little element. It's all about the little details, and these guys are killing it with the details right now. Inside, you can see John from Shedsters put in a concrete countertop. He's got cabinets going in. We've got a little spot for our mini fridge. Why not? You know, you got all these contractors out here. You can only guess what that mini fridge is gonna be filled with. We're almost completely done inside. They're finishing up some wood beams up there. They're up there in my little loft space getting ready for my bed. And then that big window gets that custom fish tank put in. And I believe George from Coral 12G is coming out to do a custom aquarium in that space, which is gonna look really great. Then they're gonna come in, just kind of finish some of the details, some furniture and everything else. I think I still wanna do like maybe a flower box here, a flower box over here. You saw the little basalt column waterfall that we had built over in this area. And then from this space this way, it's really up to the artist of the year to figure out what they wanna do. I so in my mind have about 30 different design ideas I'd like to do, but I don't wanna inspire them or change any of their ideas. So I'm really, really excited about um, seeing what they're gonna pull off and I know it's gonna be extreme. You can see the patio is totally finished. Cruxlon, C-R-U-X-L-O-N, did an unbelievable job on the patio. So we had some old clay pavers left over from Illinois brick with a combination of Unilock pavers inside, but Cruxlon killed it putting that thing together. I just love it. And it was so necessary. It really makes the shed more welcoming to come in and accepts those bar stools that are gonna sit around the outside, which I think is gonna be important at some point of the day. If we go back this way, look at how great the house is looking. We've got drywall up in there, so we no longer see any of those beams and that kind of stuff. The planter box got finished. We do have to get plants inside the planter box because the planter box without plants might be a little weird. We've got a couple more plants we need to put out here. We've got our fence built. The guys put a coat of paint on it. We really didn't like that uh, pine look and it was such fresh new pine. It still had some of the green on it. And so we put a coat of paint on there. That's gonna go all the way down this way. And each one of those is actually on wheels where we can move those things in and out. So all of our machines are gonna come right through this area and that area over there. Things are really coming together. I wanna see some patio furniture out here. I think, oh, look at this. I just noticed. 
We got new light fixtures on our house and they're working. That's so awesome. See how excited I am? Like the little things. It's really gonna look good. I hope Greg is impressed when he gets back from Utah. I think he's out there with the rest of the family on a little holiday and uh, he hasn't seen it like this in quite a while. So when he gets back, this thing should be totally ready. We'll probably get so excited to start digging before Jack and those guys show up from Atlantis. Cause he's the first artist of the year coming in. The only thing I'm kind of concerned about is if you look past the Arbor Vites, you can obviously still tell it's a warehouse. If you focus up past the shed and everything else, you can see that there's a warehouse door back over there. If you look at the fence, you can still see racking and all that kind of stuff. Should we actually take the time to put up a black fabric and block all that stuff off? Or have we gone far enough? I can't hide the fact that we're still inside of a warehouse, but if you keep your eyes down low, to me, it definitely looks like somebody's backyard. And not just somebody's backyard, but a dream backyard. I like, I love it. I would totally take this and plop it in my backyard if I could, even if I had to look at all of that. You guys tell me what you think we should do. If we should hide that with fabric, totally block it off, or are you cool with what we've done? I know what you're gonna say, so maybe I'll just surprise you. But we'll probably just cover it with fabric. <laughs> but we'll see. I, I don't know. We're kind of running out of time, too. But you guys know what to do. Comment, share, 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 share. You know, share like five times if you need to. And then more importantly, tell us what you're looking forward to us building in here. I know you all want to see a swim pond, but now that you know that Jack from Atlantis is coming out here, why don't you go over to his page, Atlantis Water Garden, and tell him personally what you think he should do out here. See you later.